My sewing armor project is progressing nicely. Time for the next section. I am adjusting a corset. Hello, it's Icy back again with the next part of my sewing armor project which you can kind of see in the background just sitting there please do check the previous videos it's progressing so well I'm really happy with how it's all coming together so far <laughs> it's actually turning out so much better than I thought it could uh, I'm really genuinely delighted with what's happening so the next part of the armor that I thought I would put together let me just move that curtain out of the way is something for the waist chest something so the pauldrons and uh, gorget cover sort of about here which to be honest might be kind of enough for sort of chest armor however sort of from the bust down definitely needs something going on um, so what I thought I would do I've done I've done sort of prototype dress-ups because why sew armor if you're not going to play dress-ups in the armor am I right anyway uh, is I think I will end up using this Elizabethan style corset so a long time ago uh, I actually don't know how long ago maybe like 10 years probably more um, I made this corset now I will link in the description to a place where you can generate your own pattern for an Elizabethan style corset actually I don't know if this is actually a corset or if it's actually stays uh, I'm pretty sure that the generator calls it a corset but it technically might be stays I don't no. Anyway, I'm going to keep calling it a corset, but like, like, like this. So it's a single piece of material. Uh, what I've done a long, long time ago, uh, the, the, my original idea was to make a goth Elizabethan costume, uh, which didn't get finished. But nonetheless, some of the important parts did, one of which being this this corset so this is two layers of broadcloth uh, because I didn't know such things as cotille existed which is the super duper heavy duty stuff that corsets are often made out of so it's two layers of broadcloth along with a uh, an interfaced layer because this was the first time I'd ever attempted to make a corset at all um, and I didn't know anything about them uh, and I didn't think that uh, the boning would be enough to hold it stiff because I knew I was working with not great fabric because I was using broadcloth so really cheap woven uh, it's not it's not pure cotton um, so I used some heavy-duty interfacing in fact the same interfacing that I have now used in the shoulder pieces so this is actually interfaced as well so I guess I guess what I'm saying here is no historical techniques were used in the making of this corset pretty much apart from maybe the pattern itself though i have no idea if that's actually historical either actually <laughs> that's fine um so i've then sewn all of the boning channels uh the boning is just like cheap boning that you could just get from like a material fabric shop the sort that you would put in like a high school formal type dress that kind of boning I don't know whether that's um, and this is yeah sort of 15 20 years ago so I don't know if that kind of boning at all replicates like uh, I wouldn't think it replicates reed boning and I don't know if whalebone baleen boning was available in the Elizabethan period anyway so uh, yeah so I've got um, in all these sections you can see there's there's some give um, uh, it's basically all across the front is straight uh, then I've got some diagonal bones on the side here uh, there's a gap here just over the hip and then uh, a couple down 
a pair down exactly the, the side and then just a couple in like a fan shape across the back as well. All of these boning channels that I've sewn are what's recommended in the pattern uh, and it works. It works very well. So one thing I did when I cut out the pattern was I looked at the shape of it uh, where it was cut over the hip bone and I went that cut that's too high it's, it was cut sort of up here that's way too high so I and here as well it was scooped down quite a lot I went no 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 that can't be right and I changed the pattern do not change the pattern is what I'm saying because ever since I've made this corset it always cuts in right here at the top of the hip uh, which makes it mildly uncomfortable to wear but only there it does cut slightly too high under here but just the smidge it's actually all right uh, the other thing I've got to say with the boning is the busk so the heavy-duty piece down the center is it's a 30 centimeter steel ruler <laughs> and it works perfectly if you like me many years ago was trying to make a corset for the first time on the cheap would I, I might, would I, I would 100% recommend 30 centimeter steel rulers. You can get various thicknesses, like for the busk. So you could either get like a really heavy duty one, which this one is actually, but there are cheaper ones that have more flex to them. Just, just saying. So this corset fits pretty much. It still fits. Uh, what happens is when it is at the top, um, when it's bound at the back, I have like, it's about, it's tight at the top, slightly too wide at the bottom, maybe just by two centimeters. Um, and what also happens is, so one of the other mistakes I made, because I kind of didn't know better, uh, you can see the, the top and the bottom is bound in satin, uh, but it's not satin bias binding. It's actually just, it's actually blanket binding, <laughs> black blanket binding uh, and it looks really nice but what happens is on the on the front at the bottom maybe I will hold it upside down that will be easier can you see how that's curled under by a lot so uh, that happens at the front because this is not uh, this is not stretch at all it has this tendency to really like aggressively curl underneath here uh, and then what also happens part of the problem with the hip as well is the fact that this doesn't stretch so this also like really pushes into the hip line as well uh, I do get the same effect at the top if I do that <laughs> this is really awkward you can see it's curving over slightly at the top as well uh, this however is a good thing it just like sits really nicely across here so i think what i'm gonna do uh, is try this on show you how it looks and then talk about the changes i'm going to make okay here we go and i am realizing i probably should have put on a not black shirt <laughs> just so you could see all right so as you can see uh i've got that great triangular uh, kind of conal look uh, that a corset of this era should produce. It's armor-like, which is kind of what I'm after. Uh, you can see here it just tips over just a little bit across the top, which is great, perfect. It's actually not, I don't know, maybe, I, maybe I've changed. It's not too high under the bust. It actually just lines up with the top of my bra strap, actually, sort of the, the side of the bra, so that's perfect. Uh, on the back, on the back, my shoulder blades sit just above the edge of where it kind of curves up. And if I turn around, you can see, I hope, <laughs> uh, yeah, that it's, it's basically like this. So the top is joined properly and then at the waist, uh, it's not, it's about... There's about a three centimeter gap, I think. Now, these corsets are not designed for waist, like waist tightening. This is not what this kind of corset is for. This corset is to give you a conal shape 
that works for Elizabethan fashion, uh, which would be then like a very big skirt kind of sitting off, just sort of off below the hips. Um, the pattern design for this one doesn't have any of the little uh, like taggy bits that I <laughs> can look up the name of later. It is like literally shaped like this, which is good because it actually kind of makes it better for like this kind of costume sort of thing that I want to do where I want to wear this on the outside as opposed to as an undergarment. So I was going to talk about the things I wanted to do to fix this up. So there's a couple of things. I'm going to leave all this top section alone, uh, all the way around. I'm happy with the height of the back. I'm happy with um, uh, the lacing, all of that. Oh, yeah, this is also crossed lacing as well. I think corsets of this style should, at this age should have had spiral lacing. I didn't know that at the time when I was making it. So, um, but yeah, as <laughs> costume, costume not uh, not historic. So what I'm going to do, I think, the main thing here is the fact that oh, you can see that the the binding is like sort of digging in and tucking under here. And then here at the front, it's like completely folded all the way over in order for it to sit properly. So I'm going to unpick this lower section of binding and I'm going to, I think what I'll do first is then just put the corset back on again and wear it around for a bit with no binding to see if that's enough. So, uh, so it doesn't cut here. Uh, I will see if it can, I don't think I'll actually be able to, even just with that, I don't think I'll be able to get the back parallel just with that adjustment. Um, so if that's not enough, what I'll do is in these sort of triangular sections here where there's no, uh, there's no, um, uh, boning, I might just put a slice in here and just add a little gore. So just a little triangular piece of fabric that will allow this section just a teeny bit to open up a little. Um, I think that would be, that would be okay. I could even put it in contrasting fabric, maybe. Um, and the other thing I could do, possibly, I don't know if it's totally not historical, but it might work, is I do actually have some really, really heavy duty stretch twill, like black twill with just a tiny bit of give in it. So that could be an option. I could put that in there. Or I could even cut like the triangles on the, bi on the bias, so like on the diagonal, so they have a little bit of give. Um, and just kind of, just add like a tiny bit of room just there. Maybe, haven't decided, I'll start with taking yeah, this bottom straight binding off and then just seeing how the whole thing sits at that point. Now, I will, once I've decided what's going on here, the plan is I've actually got some black satin binding uh, on the cut on the bias, <laughs> which I'll then rebind this bottom section. The problem is, I might need to go fancy, so it's only, that binding is only 1.5 centimeters uh, on the, like, so the, the finished edge, which means when you fold it over, it's like, it's going to be like three quarters of a centimeter strip. And obviously, this around here, this is pretty much like 1.5 centimeters here. So I think what I'll need to do is actually sew two bits of binding together, like, so I can have... So this section around the bottom is actually the same width as here. Anyway, it's going to get all fancy schmancy at that point. So I think this is going to work. <laughs> um, this is a surprisingly comfortable corset. I can, I can wear this easily for a good few hours. Uh, I can do all sorts of stuff. I can hang up the washing. I can work. I can use the computer. I can do all sorts of stuff in this corset. So it's actually pretty it's pretty good actually i'm really really happy so yeah link in the description where you can design your own elizabethan style corset if that's something you want to do uh so please join me for miles of teeny tiny unpicking
It's been a few days and I returned after having done a bunch of unpicking. I was genuinely impressed by the fact I like hand stitched the inside of all of this bottom layer. I did not realize really until I actually came to unpick it all that that's what I'd done. So good job past Icy. Now let's talk. So what I did is after I unpicked everything, I basically wore the corset again for a good few hours so I could see if that was enough. Um, the answer in initially was no. Uh, I also realized after I'd unpicked it, even though I had for some reason uh, like cut like little wedges out of this front section, good, I had neglected to do the sides for some reason. So this was all like straight. So that was one problem. So I went, okay, I'll cut uh, slashes in these curves that go over the hips, which is more important that they should have been slashed in the first place and then see how it goes. Not enough, unfortunately. I mean, if I hold this, will that work? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you can hear me as well. Oh, goodness. Okay, like this? That's pretty good. All right. You can see this fold line that's running all the way along the top here. This is where my hips are actually forcing this up to sit at. So that's actually really helpful because that tells me that if I just draw like a chalk line across that top line there, uh, that's where the corset should actually be cut to. So uh, I think the current plan is yeah, I'm going to draw some chalk lines through there, make sure both sides are even. I'm going to very carefully uh, unpick, probably, so the two layers are also sewn together across the bottom here. So what I'll do is actually unpick that because all of these uh, stays, um, all of these uh, boning, need to all be shortened as well. Now all of this boning is just cheap plastic stuff uh, so that won't really be a problem. Um, the other thing I'm probably going to do is actually shorten, I might even shorten the back boning as well. You can see this is actually folding up fairly dramatically here and the other thing I will probably do, which I couldn't do originally because I didn't have it, I think I might replace the back boning here uh, on the inside and probably the one on the other side here, these two bits of back boning, I might actually replace these ones with steel because I do actually have some steel boning at the moment. Um, so I can actually pull those out and put some steel ones in instead. And if I do that, what I could then do is actually use this plastic boning uh, somewhere else in the corset as well as like additional structure, which I might also do. The other thing I've noticed as I'm wearing this, uh, and I don't know whether I want to make this adjustment yet or if I want to wait for a little while, is um, if I go like this, what happens is it shuffles up this way. And so the bottom of it kind of points outwards. Admittedly, there is something there for it to sit over. <laughs> And these corsets are not designed for uh, waist slimming at all. Like you need you need a corset that comes down and goes over your hips if you're trying to tight lace. So these corsets are not for that. But nonetheless, what happens is it kind of pushes back on the top and sort of like wedges that way. Uh, so I have a couple of ideas for, for solutions for that. I think one thing that's probably going on is maybe the back is cut a little high. So my shoulder blades, this kind of comes up over my shoulder blades. So if I make this just a wee bit shorter, uh, it will probably sit like underneath them instead, um, which will stop like it because they go over the shoulder blades, they have a natural tendency that the back to sort of push downwards, which then sort of tips the whole corset forwards. So I think if I maybe reduce the height here a little bit, that will work. The other option, which I might do, it's kind of like a, it's a bit of a cheat, um, is when I replace these back bones, I might just put shorter bones in. So this top section will kind of end up being a bit unboned. Uh, and the rest of it will kind of just sort of shuffle down so it'll sit underneath. Otherwise, <laughs> I'll have to unpick all of this uh, and then uh, like cut this all down and like shuffle it all down. And the other 
problem there is this uh, this top eye. Uh, it's sort of I'll have to think about it. <laughs> It'll require major surgery if I a major more major surgery than what the surgery is already happening right now. Um, I'll I'll have to consider whether I whether I do that. Yeah, a workaround would just be to reduce the length of those two bones by just so they line up with the button, uh, the top hole, and that, that might do the trick. So uh, the other thing I think I might do as well, because I've got all of this um, satin bias binding that came off the bottom of the corset, the other thing I was thinking about doing as well is actually taking a strip of it, anchoring it here, just sort of uh, below the peak or below the, the point, the point, and then bringing it all the way up and then anchoring it sort of somewhere around here just sort of just behind you know just behind the back if you wear a bra or sort of where that back, back bra strap anchors which i think will sort of have an effect of like yoinking the whole corset into a better shape hopefully you can see can you see me? you can see these bones here the idea of these bones is to sort of do that already but it's like it's not quite doing what it needs to do so that's the plan right now um i might even yeah i might um i might possibly replace more of these plastic bones with metal ones i'll, I'll have a think so you can sort of see here as well there's a you can see all of these sort of gather type stuff here as this has kind of been sort of pushed backwards so that's the that's the plan right now. I'm gonna unpick all of this bottom row across, uh, sort of from about there through. I'm going to shorten, uh, increase the curve around here, so shorten this kind of this dimension, um, and then just re-anchor across the bottom a little bit. And then I'll do the same thing where I just wear it before doing any more, and then seeing if that works. Uh, but yeah, I like the idea of yeah, replacing these back bones with steel ones instead. I think that's probably a good idea. Um, it'll just give it a little more structure. Uh, the other thing I did was I bent the ruler in here, and I think that's going to help as well. I think the other thing I need to do is just this top section I need to bend back again where it sits kind of, so it curves back over the bust a little bit. Is that Elizabethan? Well, no. <laughs> Does that worry me? No, I think we've established I'm not going for, uh, I'm not really going for historic. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, except it's just lost its curve again. So I'll need to spend a little time kind of bending and then, and then see how that goes. But join me in the next part of this video as, as I try to make this a little better, but we'll see how we go. Okay, uh, I have made some adjustments and I think I'm pleased. I think I think it's worked. So I've lifted off this much <laughs> off the sides. It's it's still just slightly pulling. Like I can feel it. So I'm not sure like right in the kind of the triangle here that has no boning. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wear this for like a couple of hours and then just see like if it's still an issue or not. Um, so the other thing I've done is I've shortened uh, these bones here, these bones here, which are not only meant to be on the side, but I have realized they're actually like kind of in the back quarter almost. And the the bones at the back so there's three so not the ones directly next to like not the 
not the ones on the inside of the eyes because <laughs> I would have to do so much unpicking and I really didn't want to but the ones next to the eyes and the ones a little further over so I've reduced those all by I don't know a centimeter and a half and what but left the channels the full length so what that seems to be doing is just allowing allowing the bones to shift up uh, which is having the effect of having them sit in the right spot. Um, my shoulder blades are, it sort of can force the bones under the shoulder blades down a little, so maybe, maybe that's bad. Maybe I want to shorten those bones even more. No, I'm not sure actually. I'm not sure about that. I might need to, I probably do need to sew those higher so that they, Force the basically if the if the channels are too long for the bone, it'll all wrinkle, and I don't want that either. So I might just re-sew the backbones um, just so the channels are exactly the right length for them, rather than giving them wiggle room. Um, but feels pretty good. The other thing I've done is I've done a little more like subtle, like this some um, front busk busk. Uh, which is a metal ruler. Um, I've done some more bending where I've bent it in here just under the bust line and then had it curve about here just at the kind of apex point, have it curve back a little bit uh, and then just kind of curved it a little better at the front. So just a little bit curved under at the bottom, not much, but just a little bit. And that all is now sitting so much better. So the next step is, um, I think I'm still going to put kind of the diagonal ribbon tensioning. I don't know if this is actually going to work, but I've got the um, the binding that I unpicked from around the bottom. As you can see, it's all still in pretty good. It's pretty good, Mick. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll leave that kind of double folded, anchor it here, and then have it go up and then end just kind of around the back. I don't know if I'm going to sew it down across the whole length or I'm just going to have it like kind of loose, maybe? Maybe. I'll see actually, I might, I might be able to. And I think that would just give me a little more kind of, just change the angles a little bit. Um, so, but in general, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And for every adjustment I make to this, it makes me think more and more, I actually want to make another one from scratch. Uh, but that I think will be a different series of videos. Uh, so yeah, I think, yeah, wear this for a bit longer, work out if I really need a couple of darts in here, and I'm still thinking I might, um, I might still want to bring up the back length, just like chop it off, chop off the back number of eyes here and just bring that all up, just from, because the curve, my spine curves a lot. Um, so, I mean, ultimately that would, that would fix a whole bunch of problems probably, but if I, yeah, I could just chop off the bottom eye. Hmm. I will think about that. So, but in general, as you can see, rocks, rock solid, if I hit the busk, uh, it feels fabulous, it looks really good, I think it's going to be a perfect foundation for the rest of the armor. Uh, so yeah, it's going well. Um, and obviously I have to rebind at the bottom, but no point doing that until I really sort out what I'm doing with the rest of it. So that's the plan. I am extremely pleased. Uh, I made my very risky, <laughs> slightly terrifying, uh, cutting off the bottom eyelets on the corset. And honey, it is so good now. Uh, like for real, I have been wearing this for three hours approximately now and sitting down most of the time. So that means, you know, 
all this all this additional squishiness uh, is pushing against the bottom of the edge of the corset and it's fine it's fine I am really happy so well actually and then I sort of did some dress-ups I mean as you do and try out a few things for the next part of the project uh, for a future video so I have a good firm idea on what should work for one of the next little sections so I'm very happy so this is ready to finish off uh, it's I'm still going to do a few extra things so I'm still going to <laughs> that's very awkward uh, put the additional kind of uh, ribbon that came off the bottom that looks like this sort of from uh, just on the outside of the point at the bottom and then pull it up and anchor it around here because I still think that actually will be you know I'll try that actually I think it will look I think it, I'll do it because it will look nice but I don't need it to like re-anchor the bottom of the corset or anything anymore because the whole thing is sitting properly now I'm so happy. Uh, so then the next thing I have to do after I put those ribbons on if I decide to is to uh, create wide bias binding. Hang on. Uh -huh. Okay, I have it right here. So I have a whole bunch of satin bias binding that I have bought at some past point probably actually to edge a corset to be honest um, so it's cut on the diagonal so you can see it's got a lot of nice stretch it's it's not anywhere near as nice as this it really really isn't this is this satin binding absolutely gorgeous um, but this this will be fine it'll be going around the bottom of the corset the only thing is that's sort of that's the extent of it with the fold so that means if I use it like this and I fold it I'm gonna have like a super thin edge which will look strange because the top edge here is really wide so what I'm gonna have to do I think is if I, if I check that okay so that that's about the same so that's 15 15 millimeters 1.5 centimeters so what I'll do is basically take Sort of the full length and then I'll take the full length again and then I'll just kind of sew at the fold so I'll basically have like three centimeter wide bias binding which I can then wrap around and sew across the whole bottom and then hopefully that should work so that's the next two steps and to be on oh, actually that's it that's all I need to do. <laughs> Once I've done those two things, uh, this is finished. So it's a, surprisingly, I, I have had lots of other things on, lots of other things to do, uh, games to play, all sorts of stuff. So it has taken me a little while, um, but I'm really, really happy. It's very comfortable. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy. <laughs> right now so hopefully the final steps will work and I will be still happy when I return
So, uh, it's done. It looks great. I mean, it always looked pretty good, uh, but now it looks really good. Uh, and it fits so much better. Uh, it's relatively comfortable. Um, I can wear this for hours, I think. Uh, so I, when I was binding the bottom, I ended up taking the side up just by a teeny bit more, just kind of <laughs> accidentally really, just to sort of just smooth the curve. The other thing uh, I did uh, was to actually trim off the bottom section a little bit because I realized that the length of the center channel was shorter than the two um, uh, bones beside because I've obviously just used the 30 centimeter ruler that I had uh, but I haven't then thought about making the, this length of the corset fit the ruler so I chopped a little bit off the bottom as well uh, just to get that uh, so and and also actually sewed the channel for the um, ruler in better as well so that that won't kind of move sideways so the effect of all of those changes as well is just to take out some of the wrinkling that was there before as well not that I'm worried so much because this is a costume corset it's not meant to be a historical corset like it's originally meant to kind of look Elizabethan uh, but it was never like historical techniques or particularly accurate so I'm really absolutely happy with it. Uh, the satin I used for the bias binding on the bottom, the, the actual satin binding, uh, was terrible. <laughs> it was genuinely awful. I never want to use it again. Uh, I never want to see it again. It was shocking. Uh, if I need satin binding, like bias binding in future, I will just make it myself because that stuff sucked. Uh, anyway, so I have learned something today, uh, but the rest is great. So these diagonal straps, uh, sorry, stripes that I put on by reusing the binding that I removed from the bottom are good, but I would have bought them, uh, I should have bought them to here instead. So they're not, like, they look good, but they're not particularly noticeable from the front, but that's okay. And as you can see from the reveal, it looks with uh, the existing pieces of armor that I've constructed. So, corset, it's really, sorry, I've just stood on the mat, which the table's on and made the whole thing shake. Anyway, it's really great. Love it. Um, I think that I want to use this corset to design and make my own pattern for a corset that fits me. And I think it's possible, especially if I, if I went like an underbust corset, almost like a corset belt, I think I could turn this into something that fits me properly. Uh, so that's going on the a bit of a back burner but I think that is something that I could do because this part of my body like below the bust line it's very like straight like it's kind of like I'm a tube <laughs> with some hips um, and I think I could take this and then like sort of tape paper and cardboard and stuff around my hips to get like a, a hip shape and then take this because this is just a flat like this is literally a piece of like you can lay it out flat it has no shaping at all and then add it and then put it together and I think that's something that a much later project uh, is something I might experiment with in the future uh, but thank you very much for watching uh, let me know uh, what do you think in the comments below uh, do check out the link uh, for the web 1.0 website where you can get how to make and sew one of these yourself because it is the same website that I used originally which is actually kind of wonderful that it's still there and working um, do check out the rest of the videos in this playlist which link in the top corner uh, for the rest of my making armor 
uh, stuff. Though, I mean, technically, this is not really, doesn't have to be part of that project. This could work for anything. And there is a fair chance that I will make it work for other projects as well. So do keep an eye out. Um, what's next in the armor making project? I actually haven't decided. It's either I'm going to make the um, arm guards uh, because the um, plastic lace mats I'm going to make those out of will also be kind of the rest of the hip and chest armor as well. So if I start with the thing that's smallest, I can do some experiments on, on how I can sew with it. Uh, do I need to glue it instead? Do I need to use rivets? I don't know. So I'll, I'll do some material experiments with those and they should be relatively simple and I can get probably two out of the one placemat so I'm not wasting anything. Or I'll make a skirt uh, to go with this uh, because while I have my Elizabethan skirt here with with a hoot skirt underneath that I kind of rigged up and it works quite well I'm not sure shape wise that's actually working with this armor suit I'm actually thinking I might want something that looks a little more uh, Victorian rather than Elizabethan even though yes Elizabethan corset whatever um, so I have the skirt, the, the first attempted skirt from the Matrix coat, please check out the link in the description, um, where I put some pockets in and they looked terrible with the coat. I still have that uh, and I've done some quick kind of pinning experiments uh, and I think I can turn that material into a Victorian skirt. So, uh, once again, that's not strictly part of the armor project, but it's kind of like a foundational garment, if you, if you, if you see what I mean. So, but please do subscribe here on YouTube if you have not. Come follow me over on Instagram, uh, where there's a mix of content, but there is definitely some sewing type stuff. Uh, let me know how you're going in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.